You are now tuning in to the Mind Body Podcast, where fitness experts and life coaches share their secrets on taking your mind and your body to the absolute best. This is the advice you wish you heard years ago. Get ready and take notes as we expose the raw truth behind achieving amazing natural physique and strength and ultimately become a stronger version of yourself. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Mind Body Podcast. I'm your lovely, sexy and intelligent host Lido Dayan and in today's episode I bring you one amazing soul, a warrior, a man that is really a human example of how we all can take control of our mind. He is Brandon Farbstein. Brandon was diagnosed with a rare form of dwarfism at the age of two. Brandon has an incredible perspective on the world and his mission each day is to inspire an impact and that is exactly what he has been able to do. In just two years of speaking, over a million people across the globe have been inspired by Brandon. And of course, this is just the beginning for this smart, intelligent man. Brandon show us all that in spite of your life challenges, in spite of what people said or did to you, you can overcome it all and take control of your mind. So I'm very excited to share this interview with you all and really give you a new perspective about your life. And remember that the only way we suffer is when we are focusing on ourselves. So get out of your mind, have better references, and by that you can shift your mind and start to live an happy life. So, without further ado, let's begin the interview. So, first of all, I want to welcome you, Brandon, to my podcast, the Mind Body Podcast. Uh, really honored to have you here. So, um, would you like? Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks. Would you Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. So, my name is Brandon Farbstein. I am eighteen, and I'm a motivational and TEDx speaker. So two years ago at the age of 15, well in April 2015, I gave a TED talk. And that was the first time that not only did I, did I give a talk in front of an audience, but that was the first time that I truly was myself. And it was in that moment that I discovered my purpose and my passion in the world. And since then, I've been able to live it every single day and have inspired over 1 million people since I started down this path. This is really amazing. You just, just turned 18. So what you said that, that was uh, what drove, drove you to start to, to keep the, ro- the ball rolling. Like from the, the point you, you've been like and you did the, your talk at TEDx. That's really amazing. Uh, and yeah, that truly was the start of everything for me and I really had no expectations going in when I gave the TED talk I didn't want to become a motivational speaker I, I didn't say okay this is going to lead me to you know huge things and I'm going to be able to do this this and this but as you know once you have that momentum start it just builds and builds and builds and it takes you down this amazing path and you know I, I just I get to live that journey every single day so what, what do you think uh, shifting you, like if we take the Brandon from the past, because uh, you had uh, a different mindset, right? You had like, uh, we can call it the, the victim mindset, and now you have the victor yes. mindset. So what did change? Uh, what kind of belief do you have back then and what changed right now? So to give a little bit of context for those of you that don't know me, at the age of two, I understand it. To look at the rare form of dwarfism. So I have three feet nine inches, and this is the size that I'm going to be for the rest of my life. So growing up, as you can hear, I was sort of bullying, things like that. I got to my lowest point when I was 11 years old, when I was very, very close to and in my life by suicide. And luckily, I had two incredible parents who were able to support me throughout and get me to talk to professionals and give me the help that I need. And then at 15, that's when life really started for me. And living in a world that obviously is not meant for me. But that being said, we all have the choice. 
no matter if you have a disability, a medical condition, whatever that might be, you have the choice to either stay suffering, stay depressed, stay in that mindset, or to use what you have, become the greatest version of yourself, no matter what is in your way, you plow through it. And that is true success. But what made it to you? Because there are many people out there that uh, have uh, many uh, physical difficulties, but uh, okay, they can say, ah, uh, easy for you, you are, you are strong, you have a strong mindset. They don't see the journey. They don't see that you've been like them before. So what kind of tools would you give them in order to change their mind again? Really, we need to focus on what we have, but not just that, the priorities that are in our life usually are so messed up because think about it we spend so much time talking and spending time with and doing things with people or opportunities that don't matter to us that will not add to our life so i think no matter what you're going through no matter what you want to do you have to just shift your focus shift your priorities to what truly matters in your heart and in your mind Because as you know, we have no time to let other people dictate the life that we're going to live. And if uh, this is a young person, then he can say like, okay, but I don't know what, what I want. I, I still don't know what I want. And God gave me all of these difficulties. So what can I do? I don't know what to do. Short answer would be do what you love. Do what makes you happy. Because no matter what amount of depression or anxiety or anger that you have in the world, I guarantee every single human being on earth has at least one thing that gives them happiness, that gives them fulfillment. And if we do more of that and build it up, then we'll obviously be able to limit the amount of depression, the amount of sadness. Yes, we're still going to be in the same environment. Yes, we still have things happen in our life that we can't control. But the most important thing is training your mind, getting it to the point that you can literally do and be anything. And did the environment also change you? Do you feel that once you change the people you surround yourself with, it made the shift in you? It's insane how much I've shifted to me. Because I was the type of person where I focused on the quantity, the numbers, of friends that I had and I really didn't care about who they were or what they were giving to my life. I just wanted to say I have so many friends. But when I was able to ask myself, do these people truly add to my life? Not just add happiness or add joy, but add me becoming a better person. That's when I really started focusing on the people that matters to me and the people that will make me a bigger, better, faster person. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that they have to be on another level than I am, but we just need to be able to know that the people that we surround ourselves with is going to have exponential influence on the person that you are going to become. The thing is, we, we can intellectually know everything, okay? I know I need to change everything, but in our nervous system, we react to certain type of things, right? Because we get anchored with uh, stuff that happen in uh, our life. So let's, for example, say that in many years, uh, a lot of people uh, might call you in names. So all of a sudden, somebody call you in that particular uh, world, so it anchored you and it made you feel that uh, feeling. So how did you shift it to, to like, okay, if somebody telling me something bad or look at me in a certain way, then I'm not triggered to react. You know, again, that's always going to be there. Not just in my case, because obviously for me, you could very visibly see it. No matter where I'm at on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm the center of attention. I'm the most obvious difference. But when I started focusing on myself and my own mental health and my own stability and put the priority in that, put the focus in myself, instead of saying, oh, I'm going to base the, the look and the feelings that I have on what others think of me, of what others say about me. And we're all going to get to that point where 
let's say somebody that we really look up to said something that hurt us, whether it's about ourselves, about the work that we do, etc. And it's very difficult to recover from that. We cannot let one thing, one person, one conversation influence the person that we are. Because you have to know you've overcome absolutely everything that has stood in your way to get to this point right now. And this person or this event that's standing in front of you right now, that's not going to be the end of you. So my question was, what kind of questions did you ask yourself back then when you were in a victim mindset? And what kind of question do you ask yourself daily today in today's Brandon? So back then I would say, what's the point? You know, what's the point of my life? What's the point of my pain? Because I truly had nothing in front of me. I, I couldn't see a future where I was successful or I was happy to be. But then I saw the value that I alone have, not just to the people around me, but to the world as a whole. And I started using that. And the more and more that I stepped out of myself, out of my own pain, and I said, okay, today is a new day. What am I going to do? Even if it's the tiniest one singular thing to be able to add to somebody's day, whether it's inspiring them, impacting them, having them accept themselves, whatever that might be, I'm going to do it. So now the question that I ask myself, what's next? Mm -hmm. I'm not always looking for the, the next bigger and better thing, but I'm always looking to expand my impact because obviously I would love to be able to reach you know millions of people on a weekly basis and very soon I will be at that point, but it's not a, a the sheer number of it. It's about... the actual impact that you have on somebody's life. And, and what uh, kind of phrases did you hear over and over again when you were younger from your mother or father when you all the time asked them questions like why everybody is like that and I'm like that? So what, what did they tell you? They were always very, very vocal about the fact that I can do and be anything that I wanted to be. And of course, I didn't believe that because every parent says that, every mom, every dad says that. But when you know that you were put here and you were given all of the things that make you the person that you are for a reason, yes, we may not have all of the answers. You may question God, you may question you know, your family, your friends, whatever. for making you a certain way or for not making you a certain way. But truly, what is the point of that? What is the purpose of you staying with that amount of pain, letting that have so much weight, so much constant pressure on yourself and on the things that you're going to do versus saying to yourself, yes, my life is painful. Yes, I have to go through this on a daily basis and I have to do that and jump through these weeks. But that makes you the person that you are. And yet that is going to sound so cliche. But know that every piece, every aspect, every trait and every quality that is the person that you are has been put here for a reason. And when you find that reason, you cannot stop at anything until you are able to fulfill that for the world as a whole. Did you have any references that, that made you like shift your mind, like uh, role models that's been in your place and you saw like, oh, if he could do it, then I sure can shift my mind. Because many like, because like you said, stuck in ourselves that we forget to see that there are so many other people that's uh, living the same, but they overcome it. say it's Tony Robbins. So everything that Tony Robbins is, the influence that he has, the impact on the world that this one man has is absolutely everything that I want to do and I aspire to do. So at this point in my life, it's him. Um, I would say childhood wise, it, it always was shifting, um, but 
yes, my parents were, were two of the, the biggest role models that I looked to for strength, especially. And then also something that I discovered as I started watching more documentaries, more movies uh, that were true based on real events and, and things like that, uh, I discovered not only was I not the only one, but that you could get over it, you could get past it, and you could use it to become the best version of you and to become so epically successful. And, you know, I surrounded myself more and more with people and with things that did that for me. What, what do you do if you feel, if you still feel like some kind of stress or fear or any suffering emotion like Tony Robbins says uh, in you? So how do you do the, the 30 seconds rule? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. You know, it's something that is universal. There is absolute universal suffering going on every walk of life. I mean, look at the White House here in the U.S. right now. An individual who has billions and billions of dollars, absolutely everything that you could want in the world, yet is a miserable human being. And then on the other side of that, people who are homeless and have nothing to their name are living the most beautiful life and they're happy. So just identify in your life where are things, where are people that are toxic, that are nothing but negative, and see how you could get yourself away. Whether it's ending a relationship, walking out of a job that you know is eating away at the person that you are, doing a little bit more exercise. Whatever that might be, it's these small, minuscule changes that we are able to make that absolutely will shift everything in our life. Do you feel that like uh, what you do that influence people all, and all the reaction you, you get from people, the good reaction, it's what feed you uh, again and again because many can start something but they always uh, maybe have a self-sabotage, they sabotage themselves, they sabotage their own success but uh, the higher the vision or the more impact you get, you have and the more you see others that that actually you connect with, so that's overcome the obstacle, overcome the self-sabotage? Most definitely. It is something that, yes, there's still a ton of hate that I get, whether it's in person or on social media, and that's a, a normal part of my life nowadays. But I do have so much focus on the messages that I receive from people, ranging from teenagers to older adults say, because of you, I now have a life, or because of you, I no longer want to take my own life, or I'm able to do this, and I've been able to achieve this, and that means absolutely everything to me. Sometimes, as you know, all it takes is hearing one thing, one message, one talk, one piece of advice, that is the change in your life, is what you needed to hear. And when I'm that change, when I'm that person that is able to give somebody a little bit more insight, give somebody a little bit more inspiration, that's all that they need, that little bit more to take them to the next level. And that really is my fuel on a daily basis. And, and do you think this is what got you more discipline and focus because like you said you have a big vision you see like Tony Robbins as your idol and you really definitely have big big goals for your life so how do you still get really really disciplined because we all start somewhere and the higher the vision then it's really really hard to become so so disciplined to uh, day by day, stay disciplined in spite of all the life challenges, in spite of all of uh, people's they're trying to, you know, maybe not on purpose, even family try to like get you down of your goals and dreams. So, how you really stay committed, focus and discipline? For me, it really just is asking myself on a daily basis, not just what action am I going to take but what level I'm going to add to my life that will bring me closer to my ultimate goal for that day. 
obviously it's a very different thing on a daily basis. Whether I need to improve a relationship, I need to go rock a gig, I need to do this, I need to do that. You need to not just focus on the outcome of it, but how and who is going to get you there. Mm-hmm. And that is something I'm so strict on. The people that I talk to, who I hang around, the phone calls that I get on, if it's just something that's in it for me, there's no value in it. But if I'm able to add not only to that person's life and they could reciprocate, then that is such a great use of both of our time, both of our energy. You know, so it's just that focus. And it's just those priorities that we need to think about, be more conscious of. What's your role, your model of the world? Like, how do you see your, the, the world today in your world, in your mind? And how did you see it back then before you shift everything? There's a huge difference between perception and perspective. So perception, obviously, is what these two eyes see mm-hmm. and usually is swayed by the experiences that you've had in life. So if you are super traumatized in school, then every time that you pass that school, you're going to have that, those memories and those feelings keep coming up and coming up. Uh, versus perspective, seeing the world for actually what it is and seeing the beauty, seeing the love, seeing the joy, uh, not trying to deflect on the fact that there is a lot of hate, there is a lot of darkness, but it's just, it's using those outside perspectives. And it's just a complete difference between having a vision that is that small versus that, knowing that the world is out for your success. So what kind of metaphor would you use? What did you use back then and what do you use now? Like the world is a wall, the world is a jungle, the world is a game. That's a good question because I think there are so many and, and it definitely changes. Um, I used to so visualize this for me. The world for me before I had a purpose was dark and it was there wasn't hope for myself. Uh, there wasn't much of a path that I could see. But then I saw that I've been put here for a reason and truly everything changed. Not only did I find happiness and fulfillment in my own self, but the greatest feeling and the greatest way to heal yourself is helping other people and knowing that because of you, you've added so much to their life. So, metaphor-wise, I, I don't know, but I see that there are just countless and infinite opportunities for all of us, no matter what, and we have the ability on a daily basis to just be so much more than what we already are. I, will, I want to take you for another area of your life uh, that maybe you don't talk too much, uh, which is relationship. <laughs> and um, what, what did it shift in you? Like, do you uh, see yourself like maybe you are, I don't know, with a woman or you seek for a relationship right now? Or you just focus on uh, your main purpose and your mission in life? That's a really good question. Um, that's something that I'm still figuring out for myself. Obviously, being 18, there's certain things that you want. You know, you want a relationship. You want somebody to love you for who you are. Uh, not just being 18, but all of us want that. And for me specifically, at this point in my life, if I find somebody that has a similar mission, you know, wants to impact the world and wants to leave it a better place and wants to join my journey, then absolutely. But it's not something that I truly am putting a lot of focus on saying to myself, I need to find somebody, I need to find somebody. If it happens soon, then I'm absolutely grateful. But if it takes, you know, another year to find, that's okay. Because it's like where, wherever energy, uh, wherever focus go, energy flows, right? Like Tony Robbins yes. says. But 
It's, it's like, I believe, like, correct me if I'm wrong, when you're trying to achieve and you're so focused, uh, somehow in your mind you believe, like, if you will start a relationship, it will sabotage because it will take your attention from your main purpose, uh, your mission, right? But from my ex- own experience, I know, like, uh, if you do uh, find the right one, of course, because the wrong one can really injure all of everything. So if you find the, the right woman, it can actually make the mission even higher and take you so much higher because it fulfills something in you. Because every man needs, I believe, a, a woman, somebody to share, share the celebration. Because with family, it's, it's nice, but you got to have that something intimate, right? Almost. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's in a relationship where you're dating or you're married or if it's with a family member, if it's with a very close friend that you're able to be genuine, be vulnerable and authentic with, that I have seen so, so much of a difference in the, the person that I am because I was able to open myself up to, you know, just a couple of people in my life, but that has made so much of a difference. What would you suggest to uh, parents that uh, have uh, a, a kid that is a little bit different, have some physical uh, challenges? Uh, like myself, I have an uncle that uh, was diagnosed when he was uh, just born. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but uh, he is uh, in wheelchair, so all his uh, uh, lower body, he, he can move it. And with his hand, it's really, it's really hard for him. So what would you suggest so, to parents in order to get the, their child stronger? Because no matter what they say, at the end of the day, he still go to school, he will still hear kids talk. So uh, what, what would you suggest? Give them hope. And you don't need to have false hope and you don't need to try to act like there's nothing wrong. Because again, like I said before, there always will be something that you could point out is wrong and needs to be improved. But if you tell yourself, wow, my son, my daughter is so lucky to have been given this gift, have given this life that they have, I can't wait to see what they do with it. It's just so much encouragement that all of us need to offer each other, again, whether it's parents to kids, brothers to sisters, et cetera, et cetera. We need to be able to just lift each other up with positive energy, with passion and fuel that can be spread throughout our life. And know that just because that's the way that it's been doesn't mean that's the way that it needs to be. Mm-hmm. So what is your vision? Like, what's the big vision for, for your life? Or where do you see yourself? Like, uh, if we look uh, into the future, we step right now, we have a machine and we take to you to Brandon's in like maybe 30 years. So where, where are you? I want to say I'm uh, at a, a level similar to what Tony Robbins is right now. And what that specifically means, I don't know whether it's going to be, you know, five or six books. I don't know whether it's going to be launching my TV show or podcast. Uh, whatever that might be, but definitely being one of the top leaders that is looked to in the world, being able to inspire individuals no matter what walk of life that they're in, giving them hope, giving them a sense of purpose and pride in their life. Because as you know, that spreads and it spreads. And by the time that you know it, the action that you took, whether it was one speech, it was having a call with somebody and having them go from wanting to take their own life to not being there anymore. It builds on each other. So that's probably my, my vision. That's amazing. Last question I always like to ask uh, the people I interview is, what is uh, the legacy you would like to live when you will no longer be here? The legacy that I want to leave is a huge sense of empowerment to truly everybody. 
So not just courage, bravery, strength, because we all possess that. And it's not just about the story that you have. It's about what you do with that story. So not only do I want to leave the world a more inspired place, but I want to ingrain empowerment in each person that I'm able to come across in my lifetime. That's amazing, man. So where can we find you? Absolutely. So I'd love to connect with everybody. My website, if you want to view my TED Talk or email me, just my name, BrandonBarbstein.com. And of course, Facebook, Instagram, uh, just my name, Brandon Barbstein. And my Instagram username is my last name. Remember the name, Brandon Farstein is going to be one of the top leaders in the world. This interview will, will, will go, you will go to see this like in 20 years and see like, ah, you, you remember? <laughs> yes, most Good. definitely. And all of you are going to be a part of that journey. So I'm very, very grateful to all of you for spending a few minutes listening to us. And can't wait to see where all of you go with your life as well. Thank you very much, Brendan. Absolutely. Thanks for the door. If you enjoyed this interview or any other one from the Mind Body podcast, Feel free to subscribe to my podcast at iTunes, SoundCloud, and at my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share or leave a message at the comments below, because your opinion is really important to me. Just like I always say, leaders create leaders, and we all here to grow together. For more information about fat loss, gaining muscle, and taking your mind to one new level, check my site at www.lidodayan.com. Till then... Never, ever forget to smile. See you soon.